There is this theory, or rumor, or whatever you want to call it, that's been going around for decades. The theory is that RMS Queen Elizabeth, which was launched in September of 1938, was secretly faster than her older running mate, Cunard White Star's flagship RMS Queen Mary. Now, both ships were designed for a comfortable yet fast service speed between 28 and 29 knots. That's approximately 32 miles per hour, or 51 and a half kilometers per hour. But while both ships were initially designed by the marine engineers at John Brown Shipyards in Clydebank, Scotland back in 1929, the Queen Mary was the first to enter service in 1936. After observing whatever flaws the Mary had, they went back and revised and updated a lot of the engineering plans for Queen Elizabeth. That's part of the reason why Queen Elizabeth looked so different and why she isn't generally considered a true sister ship to the Mary. They improved the hydrodynamics of the Lizzie's bow by making it more pointed and improving the efficiency of her propulsion plant. The Mary had 24 Yarrow boilers producing a steam pressure of 425 PSI, and that steam was fed into the four sets of steam turbine engines the ship had. Together, all four of her steam turbine engines produced torque that was sent through a single reduction gearbox and produced a maximum combined power output of 200,000 shaft horsepower. Although I must add, when she won the Blue Ribbon in 1938, there was a moment out at sea where her engines were producing 215,000 horsepower. But that's beside the point. The Queen Mary's fastest recorded speed was 32.84 knots, which is roughly 37 miles per hour, or just over 60 kilometers per hour. Just take a moment to imagine a giant steel ship measuring 1,019 feet long and racing across the ocean at 37 miles per hour. <laughs> what a sight. Anyway, the interesting thing about making ships faster is that for every knot you achieve in speed, you are consuming fuel per hour on an exponential rate of increase. The Mary already gobbled up a thousand tons of fuel oil every day on her crossings. So while she was Cunard's speed queen, she was generally the more expensive ship to operate. The Lizzie, on the other hand, was designed to be more fuel efficient, to save money. She had only 12 Yarrow boilers. Each was adjusted to consume slightly less fuel while still maintaining the same boiler pressure of 425 PSI. That steam then powered her four turbine engines, which were identical to the engines on Queen Mary. The Lizzie also had identical single reduction gear boxes. So the difference was that Queen Elizabeth consumed less fuel, produced less steam, had less wind and water drag on her hull, while still maintaining her service speed of up to 29 knots. This is what led people to wonder if Lizzie was actually capable of being faster than the Mary. If it were true, then Cunard's flagship wouldn't be as impressive as the new Queen Elizabeth, because she was already larger than the Mary. Not only was she 10 feet longer, but she outsized her by 4,000 gross tons. So perhaps to prevent the two queens from competing against each other, Cunard would claim Mary as the fastest passenger ship in the world, while the Lizzie would be the largest. And that is how the theory goes. Unfortunately, there's a few holes in that logic. While Queen Elizabeth's bow was more pointed, and her streamlined superstructure created less wind drag, neither of those things were as perceptible as they may seem. She still created a huge bow wave and rolled almost as badly as Queen Mary. At least though, she plowed the seas with slightly less effort than her older running mate and therefore saved some money that way. Many people will point out that Queen Elizabeth had more advanced boilers. And while that is true, it merely allowed the Lizzie to keep up with the Mary, not surpass her speed. After all, the trade-off was that the Elizabeth had only half as many boilers, and she had to share some of her steam pressure with the turbo generator room and share it with the kitchens and passengers. The Queen Mary had three separate boilers designated for that purpose, so as not to draw pressure away from the engines. So while Lizzie's engines could achieve the same horsepower and speed, they were limited by the supply of pressure that could be fed into them. The Queen Mary, however, was all just raw power, limited only by the capable speed of the engines themselves. The Queen Mary's fastest recorded speed was 32.84 knots. That was the limit her engines could achieve, while Queen Elizabeth's fastest speed was 32.5 knots. Slightly slower, but the reason being that when she reached that speed, she consumed almost as much steam as she could produce. You might think that the difference in speed is nothing, but when you consider crossing an ocean, the ship that is a fraction of a knot faster 
gets to their destination a few hours sooner. So now you might be thinking, well, Alex, the two ships were nearly as fast as each other, so who's to say Cunard didn't request the Queen Elizabeth hold back a little just so she didn't outshine the Mary? Well, I must then refer you to a Facebook post made by historian Bill Sauter. He said, I asked both Captain Jones and Commodore Marr in person if the Queen Elizabeth's speed was ever held in check so that Cunard could advertise one ship as the largest and the other as the fastest. Both commanders said no. Full speed on the Elizabeth was in fact her top speed with nothing held in reserve. So there you have it, folks. The theory has been put to rest. The Queen Mary was the faster of the two ships, while Queen Elizabeth was larger and more fuel efficient. <laughs>